So today we're going to talk about uh, linear models. We're going to look at building linear functions from data. So the objectives that we're going to cover today are using a graphing utility to draw a scatter plot from a set of data, um, distinguishing between linear and nonlinear relations, using a graphing utility to find the line of best fit, and using the line of best fit to make predictions within our given data. And we're going to do that using interpolation. So let's take a look and get started. All right, so let's take a look at our first example. So we want to use this data to draw a scatter plot, determine if this data seems to be following a linear pattern, and if it is linear, use our graphing utility to find the line of best fit. So to do this, what we're going to do is I'm going to use the graphing utility Desmos. So you just go to desmos.com slash calculator and we can use it to graph our scatter plot as well as find our line of best fit. So let's take a look at doing that. So first let's add a table so we can input our x values and our y values. So start inputting your x values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and then go through and put your y values, 7, 6, 3, 2, 0. So we have all of our data um, now we have to ask ourselves, let's make this a little easier to see. We have to ask ourselves, is this or does this appear to be linear? So the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to look at the data visually and say, does it appear to be curving or does it seem to be kind of following a straight line pattern? Um, and to me, it kind of seems to follow a straight line pattern. So what we want to do is figure out, well, what is the equation for the line of best fit. And we're going to do that straight in Desmos. Uh, so the points that we have here are defined using the variables x sub 1 and y sub 1. We want to graph this line of best fit and we're going to need to use those variables. So what we're going to do to graph our line of best fit, we're going to say y sub 1, and to do the sub 1 you actually just have to push 1 and it automatically knows that you're talking about the list y sub 1. So y sub 1, and then you're going to use a tilde, so this here, use the tilde, is about, and we're using the tilde because it means it's about. Um, since our data is not perfectly linear, we can't use an equal sign. So y sub 1 is about, m is your slope, x and then sub 1, we can just put 1 again, just typing m x 1 is going to make it recognize that we're talking about this data set. And then plus b, so we have our y-intercept, and that gives us our line of best fit. Now it also gives us some information here about our line of best fit. It tells this r value here is called the correlation coefficient. And what that correlation coefficient does is it pretty much tells us what the uh, how strong of a linear relationship we have. So negative 0 0.988 is a very strong negative correlation. Correlation coefficient ranges between negative 1 and positive 1. Uh, if your line has a negative slope, you'll have a negative correlation coefficient. If it has a positive slope, you'd have a positive correlation coefficient. Um, M is our slope, just like it is normally in slope-intercept form, and B represents our y-intercept of our line of best fit, just like it would be in slope-intercept form. So if we were writing the equation for our line, it would be y equals negative 1.8x plus 3.6. You can see when we graph this line, it falls right on top of the other equation that was graphed using this uh, regression, the linear regression. Uh, now what's the point of graphing a line of best fit? Well, we use line of best fit to help us estimate values. Um, now when you're estimating values in between data that you already have, we call that interpolation. So it's predicting values inside of the data that we already have. 
if you predict values outside of the data that we have, so like to the right of positive 2 in the x and to the left of negative 2 in the y, then that's called extrapolation. Uh, typically, interpolation is more accurate than extrapolation, or at least more reliable, um, because we know what's happening within our data set, whereas maybe the data makes a, dra a drastic turn outside of our data. Maybe all of a sudden it turns up, and so the prediction that we make outside of our data might not be all that reliable. So let's take a look at what we think the value, let's estimate or predict what um, the, the y value would be for our equation using the line of best fit. And let's estimate it when the x value is 1 half. And we can actually do this straight in, our, in Desmos um, by graphing a vertical line at x equals 1 half. And it's going to, the point where it intersects is going to give us the y value, right? Because it's a point of intersection. So the solution to this linear system is going to be this point. So when x is 1 half, the y value is going to be 2.7. So we can use this as a prediction for the x value at 1 half. Okay? So that's kind of how you use a line of best fit. It's what it's used for to make predictions. So let's take a look at another example. Let's clear out this data here and let's take a look at a second example. So this second example says use the given data to draw the scatter plot, determine whether the graphed data appears to follow a linear pattern, and does there appear to be a relation between the age of a mother during pregnancy and the number of incidences of Down syndrome? And if so, is our relation positive or negative? So that's what this is looking at, is the age that mothers are during pregnancy and the number of incidences that Down syndrome occurs. So I'm going to input this data into a table. Uh, I would like you to practice it on Desmos as well. And then we can come back and take a look at answering these questions. All right. All right, so I've put this data from our problem into another table in Desmos, and I've kind of adjusted my window so that it fits better. Uh, so let's go through and answer these questions. So part B is asking for us to determine whether the graphed data appears to follow a linear pattern. Uh, so if I'm looking at this and expecting a linear pattern, it, the first part may seem kind of linear. It looks sort of like it's growing linearly. But then it takes a pretty steep curve up. So I would say that this does not appear linear. It appears to be curved. It looks more exponential to me. Um, part C is asking whether there is a relation between the age of a mother during pregnancy and the number of incidents of Down syndrome. Now, even though there's not a linear relation, I do still think that there appears to be some kind of relationship, right? It looks like as the age of the mother is increasing, the incidences of Down syndrome are also increasing and actually increasing rather dramatically. Um, and that would be a positive relation. So it does look like there is a relationship and it appears to be positive. So we don't talk about a line of best fit for this one because it's not going to give us a great prediction of our data. All right, so the last example that I'd like to look at is this example here, which is looking at the weight of a candy bar in relation to its calories. Uh, and we want to determine whether there's a, a linear relationship between these. Uh, and if there is, is it going to be positive or negative? Um, and then we're going to take a look at if there is a linear relationship, what is the equation for our line of best fit? Uh, take a look at what the slope means in the context of the problem. And again, if it's linear, maybe use that model to estimate the uh, number of calories that a candy bar that weighs 62.3 grams would have. So right now I'm going to input my data into a table. Uh, why don't you go ahead and do that as well. And then when you're finished, we can come back 
together and take a look at some of these problems. All right, so now that we've plot our data, let's take a look at answering some of these questions. Uh, so we drew our scatter plot. So I want you right now to take a look at this data and tell me, does it appear to be linear, uh, a linear relationship? And if it is, is it a positive relation or a negative relation? So go ahead and take a minute to look at the data and deter determine whether you think it's a linear relation. And if it is, is it positive or negative? All right, so now that you've had a chance to take a look at that, we see that there's kind of two clusters here, but it does still look like it's gonna have a linear pattern. Uh, we're missing some information in here that we could maybe predict the value of through interpolation, but we are gonna say that it looks to have a linear pattern. Uh, because it is linear, what we're gonna do is now we're gonna try and find the line of best fit. So what I want you to do is using Desmos, like we did before, find the equation for our line of best fit. Okay, so go ahead and do that now. So now that we have our line of best fit uh, with equation y equals mx plus b using our m and b value here, uh, we can now take a look at trying to tackle part d, which says interpret the slope in the context of the problem. So remember that the slope is the change in our y values divided by the change in our x values. So this graph is taking a look at the weight of a candy bar versus its calories, where the weight is along the x-axis here and the calories are along the y-axis here. So if we're interpreting the slope, we want to know what does a change, what does the change in weight, how does it affect the calories? So go ahead and answer that question now. How does the change in weight affect the number of calories in a candy bar? Okay, so now that you've answered that, let's take a look at what it's saying. So if our slope is 2.8836, what that's saying is that's our, we can call this our change in our y, and if we make this over 1, that's going to be 2.8836 calories per 1 gram. So what this is saying is then as we increase in 1 gram in weight, then the number of calories is increasing by 2.8836. So this is a positive relationship, right? And our calories increase as the weight increases by about 2.88 calories per gram. Now, we want to use this to predict the number of calories in a candy bar that weighs 62.3 grams. So Remember we did that before in our first example when by graphing a vertical line. So go ahead and graph a vertical line and use that vertical line to predict the value of the number of calories in a candy bar that weighs 62.3 grams. All right, so now we have our vertical line with x equaling 62.3. And if we want to figure out or estimate the number of calories that would be in a candy bar of that weight, what we want to do is we want to look at the point of intersection. So this point of intersection is telling us that if a candy bar weighs 62.3 grams, then it's going to have about 277.236 calories. So it's about 277.23 six calories in a 62.3 gram candy bar. Uh, so in this lesson, we took a look at how to draw and plot a scatter plot, plot using Desmos, how to find the equation for a line of best fit. And we also looked at how to make predictions about values using the line of best fit. So good luck on your homework tonight, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.